Uh, this is Mr. Bullock, and this pre-calculus lesson is on geometric vectors. Okay, um, you're going to need uh, uh, some kind of straight edge with a ruling, uh, a measuring device like a ruler uh, that has centimeters on it and inches on it, and a protractor also, so we can measure some angles and stuff. Okay, so here's some definitions, you guys. A vector is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. Well, don't let that scare you, you guys. A vector, is, it kind of looks like a ray from geometry. Okay, it's just uh, uh, the length of the of their line segment is called the magnitude. So the length of the vector actually is called the magnitude, and the direction uh, indicates the direction of the vector. It's just the angle that it makes with the horizontal. So for example, here, here's vector a, okay, or vector pq, okay, both the same vector. Uh, if it's vector pq, then it starts at p and it goes in the direction of q and it stops at q. It doesn't go through like a ray does. It stops right there. Okay, so the magnitude, which is which would be the length of this vector, is denoted by uh, kind of looks like the absolute value. So the, the absolute value of vector a right there. Okay. All right, not bad so far, right? And it's not too bad, you guys. So a vector uh, that has its initial point at the origin is said to be in standard position. So here's the origin right here. So this vector is in standard position right here, and the direction is 45 degrees. Okay, and the magnitude would be the length of this, whatever the length of that is, okay? So the direction of this vector is the direction angle between the positive x-axis and the vector. So here, uh, like I said, the direction angle uh, is 45 degrees, so uh, the direction of this vector B is at 45 degrees right there. Okay, and I have a protractor here, so I mean, uh, oh, I didn't know I can do that. Interesting. Oh, I better not do that. Never mind. Never mind that protractor. I don't know how to use that uh, well yet. I'll figure it out. All right, so uh, if both the initial point and the terminal point of the vector are at the origin, it has, it's called a zero vector, and we don't deal with those very often, you guys. In fact, I don't remember dealing with them, but imagine if I started right here, can you see my cursor right there, and it ended right there. Can you see it has length zero? Okay, it doesn't matter what direction you go, there's length zero, so it's called a zero vector. All right, again, we don't deal with those too much. Here's six vectors right here, okay? Of these six vectors, vectors z and y are equal because they have the same length and they're going in the same direction. Can you see they're both going up to the right right here? Okay. Um, uh, okay, and then uh, also, you guys, um, uh, vectors uh, v and u are equal because they have the same length, okay? And they're going in the same direction also. They're both going down. Okay, and this remember this means the magnitude, which is the the length. So the length of vector z equals the length of vector y. Okay, and they have the same direction. They're going up in the same direction right there. All right, uh, and vectors v. I'm sorry, the the magnitude of vector v, which is the length, equals the magnitude of vector y. Let's look at v. Here's v right here. Here's y. But they're not equal vectors because they're not going in the same direction. Vector y is going up here, and vector v is shooting down. So they're not equal vectors, but they do have equal magnitudes. Okay, that's what those are, which is equal lengths, you guys. All right, so the sum of two or more vectors is called the resultant of the two vectors. And this is what we deal with mostly, you guys, is the resultant. The resultant can be found by either what's called the parallelogram method or the triangular method. Here's the parallelogram method right here. Okay, the parallelogram method is to draw the two vectors uh, so that their initial points of start. They start at the same spot right here. So say I had uh, vector Q right here and I had vector uh, P right here. Okay, and then where they end at the terminal spot, spot so the terminal spots right here and the terminal spots right here, you, you um, complete a parallelogram. So can you see the parallelogram right there? And then uh, the sum of the two vectors is then the diagonal of the parallelogram. So this is called the resultant. This is the resultant of vector P plus vector Q right there. Okay, easy enough, huh? Uh, and then the triangular method is to take one of the vectors, start it off, and where the, where the vector ended, where it had its terminal side right there, that's where you pick up the new vector. So the other vector, you just go right there. And then the resultant is where you started with the first one and where you ended with the second one. So this one's called the triangular method. Both pretty easy. This is my resultant vector P plus vector Q right there. Okay, nice and easy. All right, so find the sum of vector u and vector v using both the parallelogram method and the triangular method, and then we're going to compare the resultants. Well, these are going to be the same, you'll see in just a second, okay? So I'm going to uh, do vector u, 
Okay, and then from vector u, uh, I'm going to start them, uh, put, uh, if they're going to both start right there, and then vector v is going to go down here at the same starting point, so it's going to shoot down here, and then I create the parallelogram out of those guys, and then I connect the diagonals. Okay, so there it is right there. There's vector v, and at the same spot uh, where I started, I'm sorry, vector u, where I started vector u, I do vector v, and then I make the parallelogram, and then the diagonal of those guys is my resultant. There's the resultant right there. Okay, and then to do vector uh, u plus v on this one, I'm going to draw a vector u right here. So watch my cursor. Here's vector u. It's going to go up to right there where it stops, and then I'm going to do vector v where it goes like that, and then it's going to be like that third side of the triangle right there. Okay, so there's, uh, and then right here is the resultant right here. So I did vector u, here's vector v, and then you, where you started with vector u and where you ended with vector v, that would be the resultant. Okay, so compare the, uh, the, the two resultants, you guys. They have the same magnitude because they're the same length, and they have the same direction. Okay, so they're the same. All right, both resultants have the same magnitude and direction. All right, so two vectors are opposite vectors if they have the same magnitude, the length, remember, and are in opposite directions. So, for example, uh, vectors g and vectors h are opposite vectors because they have the same length and they're going in opposite directions. They don't have to be like, you know, in geometry we have opposite rays, and they have to make up a straight line, but opposite vectors don't. See, here's some more opposite vectors. This one is going in this direction. This one's going in the opposite direction. And since they have the same magnitude, which is the length, they are called opposite uh, vectors. Okay? Uh, and then so the opposite of vector g, you just say negative, opposite g, or negative vector g or just opposite vector g. Okay? So you just put a negative sign in front of it, and that's how mathematically you say the opposite of that. All right, so this is a good spot to split this lesson. And so if you're in my pre-calculus class, I would assign this for your homework assignment. And then the word problems are on the next lesson. Okay, take care, you guys.